I'm Leah Danielson. I'm David Evian. I'm Matt Callahan. And we watch Channel 5 Eyewitness News at 10 o'clock at night. And this is our analysis of it. So the talent on the news, the two main anchors were Leah McLean and Bill Lund. And then for sports was Chris Long and the weatherman for 5 o'clock, 5 news at 10 o'clock at night was Dave Dahl. And so the story selection that we saw was they focus a lot on local news. And I emailed the senior executive producer, Katie Hamner, and she told us that that's what the focus was. So we thought that their philosophy really matched what they were showing as far as news stories. And the top three stories that um, they showed really focused on impact as well. The first one was rising property taxes in, in the counties around the metro area. So that affected a lot of the viewing area of um, KSTP. Also, the, se the second main story was the school board vote. And that also affects a lot of the parents who watch the news and a lot of people in the community. And then third, their third top story was the um, chokehold in New York that the officer had on a citizen who died. And that's just a big, um, a big story throughout the whole country. And they were able to kind of localize the story and show how officers in Minneapolis deal with this sort of thing too. So they, from chapter two, what we thought that they focused on was proximity, impact, and conflict for, our, for these top stories. And then the intended audience too, I asked in the, in the email, and what she told me is Minnesota, the metro area, is their main focus and also part of Miss Wisconsin. But then they also try to focus on Minnesota as a state in the whole, and they try to connect all of their stories um, to their viewing area. And that's kind of a map of their viewing area too. And then that demographics, what they said was the age 25 to 50 range because that's what a lot of their commercials kind of aim for people in that age. And they also, we think that they tend to have a lot of their stories that impact families, such as the school board vote story. And then um, they also talked about a restaurant in the metro area, area, so I think they do have a lot of stories too that deal with the Minneapolis and St. Paul downtown area. And then uh, for their organization, how they organize um, their stories and how they're on the air. Uh, first, they uh, really fo focus on impact, the amount of impact. So the story was the amount of the highest amount of impact for their viewing audience, but obviously, obviously, be at the top for the beginning of their newscast. And then as the story the stories go down, probably less people are going to be impacted by this story, but yet there's going to always be some kind of impact to their viewing audience in some way or form. And then uh, both anchors actually read the top stories, and then um, they're thrown to reporters because you want more coverage of those top stories because they're the top ones, they're more important. So people are going to want more information uh, when it comes to those. And then also the anchors uh, take turns in reading blocks. So first you'll see uh, one anchor talk about or read uh, probably four or five stories, and then the next block of the four or five stories, it'll be a different anchor just to give you some different personnel and uh, a different delivery uh, for all the news stories of the, of the newscast. And then the weather is near the end of the first and the second half hour because, well, weather changes in Minnesota. But also because people are always talking about the weather, that's always a big topic in Minnesota. So with the news, you always want to uh, be up to date with the weather. And if you missed the first, uh, near the end of the half, the first news weathercast, then you can always check and uh, come in on the second. News uh, weathercast, and then for all the sports fans, well, I don't know if they watched the whole news newscast until the last five minutes, but they definitely tuned in the last five minutes to um, really get their inside scoop on all the latest sports, uh, sporting events, and news and sports. So that's kind of how uh, KSTP organizes their newscast. And now we want to show you how they open and close with this video. dies at the hand of a New York City police officer. The development sparking outrage in that city tonight. Property taxes are on the rise and so are tempers here in Isanti County. Coming up, we'll tell you by how much and what, if anything, can be done. 
and it's decision day after neighborhood concerns put a restaurant opening on hold. We're hoping today will be the final uh, final day that we'll be able to get the outcome that we've been looking for. But we begin tonight with rising property taxes. Property taxes are going up for nearly every Minnesotan. Budget proposals show increases in every... Okay, so that's kind of how their opening goes. They, sh they normally preview about three stories and then they throw it to the anchors who then start reporting on it and then they send it to the reporters. And now I'll show you how they normally close. County surrounding the Twin Cities metro area. A company in Northern California has come up with this thing. It's half go-kart, half big wheel. It is simply put, freaking awesome. This sucker <laughs> markets for two grand. That comes with a six and a half horsepower engine, but they'll make you a souped up model for three grand that you <laughs> the envy of kids and grown-ups all over your neighborhood. My neighbor showed me this video and I love yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, kind of like your Mary. shopper, man. Yeah, I'm really big boy toy. <laughs> good night, folks. So as you can see, the way they close out their video is with a little kind of a tease. Yeah, they call it the nightcap, and I was a little thrown off because um, after sports, he said, we'll be right back with your nightcap, and I'm like, what is that? But then I guess once you, if you watch it every day, you'll kind of understand that's their kind of tease. And also who did the tease was Chris Long, the sports anchor, so it was a little a little different, uh, but you know, he did really well in the tease. Though. Yeah. Okay, so we also want to show you another video. We watched the news again the next day on Thursday night. The first night we watched was Wednesday. So we want to show you how they opened the news on that day because it was a little bit different. working with a slow computer, by the way. Can you name the world's most beautiful diamond? This is just a commercial before it'll play. Lazar, the world's most beautiful diamond? She knows, now you do too. Waiting for her at RF Molar too. to four lanes of freeway. Protesters snarl afternoon traffic. Why law enforcement let it happen? A controversial decision after a heated debate inside a packed room. If I come out, am I still gonna be able to do what I love to do? In the rush to create new rights for transgenders, you're failing to protect the rights of biological girls. How the vote is creating change in Minnesota high school sports. And the battle of the stadiums. Two competing efforts to bring Major League Soccer to Minneapolis as one of the plans gains a powerful new supporter. But first tonight, traffic is back to normal on 35W. Earlier today... Okay, so this, on Thursday, it was a little different because there were those big protests in town. So they spent about three minutes reporting on this when they first opened. And as you saw, the two anchors were standing up in the beginning on Thursday's newscast. Um, instead of sitting in their anchor chairs like they normally do. So that was a difference, how they can vary, depending on how big the story is, they vary the delivery to kind of match it. Um, and then we kind of saw that the format was a little different too. The first, um, on Wednesday, they would alternate, like kind of read an even number of stories between the two anchors, Bill and Leah. But then um, this newscast, it seemed like Bill would read um, lo like longer blocks of stories and then Leo would report on more um, ones where she'd have to um, throw it to reporters or talk to other people. So that was kind of a difference too. And this one, Dave Dahl was in the beginning a little later and he is the weatherman. So I thought that was interesting too because he reported on this Christmas tree story that they were selling Christmas trees um, to support veterans. So that was kind of unusual that they had the weatherman report on a story. Um, and then, like I said, Bill kind of read more stories than Leah did on that day. 
And then uh, the variety and pace, like, as you can see, the packages are, like, spaced out really well for variety because in a newscast, as we've learned in this, in this class, you, any type of newscast, you want to have a different kind of variety to kind of branch and hit different parts of your audience um, that you're trying to uh, shoot for when you're uh, giving out your newscast. And then variety of the second show is a little bit better, probably um, just because they have a little more time to look through all their different stories and see how they really wanted to put them in order and uh, see what kind of variety they had in the story so they could prioritize that throughout the newscast. And I think additionally on, this, on the second day when we watched it that there was more news to report on because they had all those demonstrations in town and there were bigger stories to talk about. So that kind of maybe is a factor that comes into play. There's always like a slow news day as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you can't get all the stories um, all the time, but I mean, you know, you got to make do with what you have to. So, um, so now we'll explain what we liked and didn't like. Um, we liked the variety because we were talking about earlier how that's important to keep the viewer's attention. Also their story selection too. Um, we liked how they had the most impactful ones first because a lot of people will just watch it at the beginning to see what the headlines are. Um, and they really keep your attention so you watch the entire newscast rather than just tuning in for the headlines. And then they had these exclusives too. For some of the stories, they'll, they would say, and you'll only see this on five. So they say that just so they, their viewers feel like special like because they're watching Channel 5 that they're going to be having a better experience than if they watched a different station. And then there is a, they recover well from their mistakes because on the first newscast, um, one of the teleprompters went out for Bill Lund and it looked like he was trying to read off of Leah's teleprompter, like looking across and it looked kind of awkward. But we think that they recovered pretty well for it, but and they never apologized or anything. So I don't know if that's normally typical for them not to apologize and just keep going, or but we think that they kind of recovered okay. And then the, we didn't really like that wrap up when they had the oh, I forget what what was it called um. the. So you don't even remember what yeah, it was. Yeah, I don't remember either. This, <laughs> yeah, this sports guy, Chris Long, and when he would read the kicker at the end of the newscast, we just we thought that there would probably be a better way to do it. Maybe have all the anchors tease it or something. It was called the nightcap. Now that I think about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's a cute idea, like a nightcap, like right. going off of yeah. that sort of thing. And at the end, like you did see some, of the, most all the all the anchors came back and in, into a wide shot, and they were kind of talking about it, but. They only had about four seconds, and then the newscast was fading out, and it was over. So yeah. you didn't really get to hear that much dialogue about the nightcap between all the anchors. So then it's kind of like, oh, what did I just see? You know, really, it didn't really stick in the audience's head at the end of the newscast, like he was trying to. And Matt will talk about sports sports guy <laughs> so yeah looking at you know some of the sports you know what I saw with the sports as well is that Chris Long has got this kind of um, raspy kind of voice when he talks and it, it's kind of a nice it, it's got a nice feel to him and uh, he had his own desk by the way when he was doing the sports cast and he really sh he really showed confidence in what he was doing he knew what he needed to report what he you know what stuff he wanted to know with the news so he kind of talked about um, you know, the Wild Twins and Vikings, you know, it's centered around Minnesota, obviously, since it's a Minnesota station. So they made sure that, you know, it was more Minnesota-based, you know, the big stories with the Vikings. They were they're taking on, last week, they were about to take on the Jets, you know, how they are preparing for this week, um, doing a couple of interviews, and then talking about the Wild, especially uh, Ryan Suter, who has the mumps right now, that people, you know, the top, guy, top defenseman for the Minnesota Wild, you know, looking at him. And people want to keep up to date with that stuff as well. And then looking at the Twins as well, the Twins, uh, big sign with uh, Torrey Hunter coming back to the Minnesota Twins. He did his own uh, interview with him, which is nice, you know, because, you know, not many people have that kind of thing with sports. I mean, you know, having one-on-one -on -one interview when they, you know, finally come to Minnesota when they sign that one-year deal and, you know, $10 million for Torrey Hunter. So he had most of the, I mean, it wasn't like huge stories, but Torrey Hunter coming back to the Twins was a big story for them. And then you kind of see him uh, stand in front of another desk in a different corner of the room, like I said. Um, he's, kind of, he's kind of in his own space because you, you want to have it kind of more sports-based and everything. And, you know, compared to other stations like WCCO, you see Mark Rosen kind of 
off to the side as well, but he doesn't really have his own desk, but he, he does throw some teases out there. But it, it's got a nice feel to it because it's kind of like the sports, like like a sports ring, like a sports center where you can just stand and then, you know, they got the graphics up. And the graphics were pretty good as well, having some video and having some pictures as well with that. And Long didn't really uh, mess up during the newscast, really, for both. He kind of just, he, he, had, he went at his own pace. He was... It wasn't like he was going too quick, but he was at the perfect pace where he can be like, okay, this is what's going on, the Wild are doing this, Tory Hunter told me this when we were uh, reporting, and then they put out a package of him interviewing Tory Hunter, so that was cool as well. And Long had the appropriate graphics in the news class and, uh, in the newscast, including, including the one-on-one -on -one interview with Hunter. I mean, he, he asked the right questions. And he put it in the news package, which which makes it makes it better for all the sports fans, all the Twins fans as well. Um, looking at that, Tory Hunter um, had the right questions. He you know the questions he wanted to hear, and the people want to hear you know what he thinks of coming back to the Twins, where he started, and it's the best thing for everybody else. So looking at that, and then the last thing as well, he kind of had a nice flow to it for both newscasts. And he had enough information to make the stories go for five minutes. I, I think exactly almost five minutes because they always, you don't want to go overboard. You never want to go uh, a little too early. But again, I think Chris Long did a great job with the sports. He, uh, he was very, very thorough in his delivery as well as even, you know, the quality of the stories as well. So from the sports side, I thought uh, Chris Long did a very good job. So in conclusion, we'll just go over a little bit about what we learned. So we learned to include impactful stories because that will, um, it'll have the biggest influence on the viewers and make them want to tune in. And then also to pay attention to the organization and make sure that you're not spending too much time on one anchor over the other. So there's more variety in that way too. And then also with variety, not just in the layout of the newscast, but the variety in the type of stories that you're including. And then to manage the time well, because you only get so much time for a newscast and you don't want to spend too much time on one story and um, take away important time from another story that you may have to cut. And then I think that we learn to have sincere teases, because sometimes in our KSSU news show, I know that we're not always the most sin sincere when we're sending it to weather or back to sports. And I think that they do a really good job of teasing each other, too. And I know that's like a skill you have to learn too, so we'll be working that on that too in KSSU News. Yeah, you have to keep it fun because these guys are, are professionals and they love what they do. So we really got to learn um, what it's like from a professional standpoint and uh, when you're getting paid to do it, <laughs> yeah. that you love to do it too. So not too many mess ups either. So I guess overall we would give um, Channel 5 News a thumbs up with their broadcast and that's the end of our analysis. Thank you.